Guy in excess, what a band. Do we start talking about this bike? Okay, people are always interested in bike packing setups and I thought it'd be really useful to do a post race ride rundown of this. Uh, a very dirty Cervelo. It's dirty because I haven't cleaned it and I rode it across lots of deserts. This is my Cervelo Aspero 5, which I used for Badlands this year and I also used for Badlands last year. First thing I'm gonna say is I am genuinely blown away by how good this bike has been at this race. No mechanicals, no punctures, no problems for two editions of probably one of the hardest gravel ultras in Europe. It's really, really cool. So <clears throat> there's a couple of things that are different to the setup this year to what I had last year. I made changes, I guess, based on my experience. And a lot of people have asked questions about the setup and what I've done this year in comparison to last year. So I think it'd be really cool to just talk through it in all honesty. I'm gonna start from the back of the bike. So at the rear of the bike, I'm using Tailfin's Aero Pack. This is the carbon version of the Aero Pack, which comes, also comes with the pannier mounts. So for more, I guess, bike touring trips where I'm taking more stuff, I will use these sort of little pannier packs on the side here. I've added on these little reflective stickers, which just add a bit more um, visibility and a bit more security to me personally. And Tailfin do this special adapter, which you can attach on the bottom which subsequently will allow you to attach a water bottle. You can also uh, use this using the like tail fin straps or any other like ski straps, you could use it to attach kind of anything and anything you wanted to. They do a variety of different mounts which you can add on the rear here. This is just one of those options. There's also one for a light as well. Um, but because I have this here, I've attached a light just to the strap itself. This is nothing special, this is a cat eye sync kinetic light um, basically I bought it years ago and I used it for the national 24 and it lasted for longer than the national 24 because I forgot to turn it off so I knew that the battery life is pretty good in it and it kind of just clips on quite nicely there uh, does a job nice little light and then in terms of what was inside this pack as you can see it looks quite full now but during the race I didn't actually have too much in it I had uh, a silk liner bivy bag which is um, the outdoor research one, which has the little tent bit in it as well. And you can kind of have it open with a mesh bit so you can get some fresh air in as well. So the, the air mat and the silk liner Alp kit ones are nothing too fancy, but for the cost of them, I think they're pretty good. And I had a spare set of bib shorts, sunscreen, chamois cream, like toothbrush, toothpaste, fly spray, a rain jacket and a down jacket. That was pretty much it in there from the top of my head, but there was space to be able to add additional food uh, as of when I needed to carry more, like some more water, uh, Pringles, uh, you know, sweets, all that kind of, the real, you know, cycling nutrition that is very important. Bocadillos, you know, proper nutrient. I did actually have a bocadillo in there at one point. Running down the bike, the tires I used, both front and rear, are from Schwalbe, who very kindly invited me out to this race. So the tires that I'm using this time are the Schwalbe G1 Bite. Uh, I'm using the same tire on the front and the rear. Last year I used a G1 Bite on the rear and an Ultra Bite on the front. Um, the Ultra Bite has a slightly uh, deeper tread for a bit more grip, and the Bite is a slightly faster tire. Um, and I chose the Bite combination because I think that actually I didn't need that extra grip last year. This uh, is a 2.1 inch tire on a 650B Parkour's wheel. It's Parkour's outer wheel, which is their gravel wheel, super, super wide rim, relatively high spoke count, so it's really good off-road. It's carbon and you can order your wheels if you want with a Dynamo hub or a standard hub or ceramic hubs, etc. You can customize them left, right and center. For me, standard hub, um, and Dynamo on the front. The Dynamo hub is a Son Deluxe hub, which is the hub that uh, is probably more designed for road cycling, but it allows you to uh, get a brighter light and kind of charge more efficiently. The rotor are Shimano, uh, technically XTR mountain bike rotors, but that rotor is now used for the new 12 speed group sets. They basically started using it on the road as well as off-road because it was lighter than the previous iteration 
I'm riding a 160 on the rear and on the front. Bigger rotor, better braking, better stopping. Then the cassette is from a company, oh, a nice whistle. The cassette is from a company called Garbar, which is a Polish company that make a CNC one-piece alloy uh, cassette. Uh, so the cassette is at 11 to 50, which is huge. And to make that work on a Shimano DI2 group set, I have gone for an XTR 11-speed DI2 rear mech. Now, the XTR 11-speed group set is actually quite an old group set and they haven't done a 12-speed DI2 mountain bike group set yet, um, but you can still get these XTR DI2 rear mechs or XT ones for DI2 that work and are completely compatible on a one by system uh, with the road shifters, etc. It has to be specifically with a one by system because they, they don't work in a two by system. Uh, but I'm gonna care about that by saying there are ways of making it work if you purchase the XTR DI2 front mech and then run an XTR crank set to do the chain lines and stuff. It's very confusing. So the XTR DI2 rear mech works with the 50 tooth cassette with a wolf tooth goat link applied in between it. The shifting is not as crisp or as perfect as Shimano would recommend or like, but it, it allowed me to make it work with a 50 tooth cassette so I could get the easiest kind of gear ratios that I wanted to. The tires are set up tubeless. Sealant is from Schwabi. I got some Joker valve caps, which are from my mate at Brick Caps. You need something that makes you smile and laugh during these races. I like the Joker. And then if we move forward on the bike, the saddle comes from Pro. This is the Pro Stealth Off-Road Edition of the saddle. It's very slightly different to the Road Edition. It has a bit more padding in it, and the pressure relief channel is actually filled in in this saddle. Um, the reason why they filled it in is basically because if you're riding it off-road and you're riding in mud and stuff, you don't get a spray up your butt. I uh, really rate the off-road saddle for both road and off-road. I really like it. The Pro Stealth is the saddle that I use on everything, of course. Everyone's butt is different and every saddle suits different people, but this is the saddle that works for me. Seat post is the standard inline Cervelo seat post that comes with the bike. The tail fin itself attaches to the seat post clamp and you have a special through axle, uh, which you put in the rear and the arch attaches into that through axle as well, just with these little clippy bits. Continue moving forward from the bike. The frame bag and top tube bag are prototypes from tail fin. I'm very lucky to be part of their R&D division and being part of that means that they provide you with prototypes of products that are potentially going to be released further down the line. They're quite often white, so they stand out on a separate. The production ones will not come in white, they'll be coming in a, this kind of same material as the rear pack. What's very clever about them is that they're attached using a strap system, and these straps are specially designed by Tailfin to stop the bags from moving so you get no kind of rub. Um, and the bags themselves also have a rubber mount on them so they don't slide around as well. What I quite like about the whole setup as well is I can use the same strap for the top tube bag as I can for the frame bag. So there's actually only one strap holding those two bits in place. The um, top tube bag itself has little pockets on the side which you can chuck rubbish in, uh, a slot in it so you can run any kind of cabling or whatever you want inside it. And basically inside I was running this, which is from K-Lite, which is basically a current regulator uh, from the Dynamo, which allows me to power my lights and also charge from it. The normal way of doing this sort of setup would be you run a charging cable, which normally goes into your front light and then subsequently into one of these little goings. It says ACDC on it, kind of cool. Um, and then from this, you will be able to charge uh, two USBs. One of those USBs, how I have it set up, is to power the rear light from K-Light. That's also powered from it. And then what I do is I run a USB into a battery pack, and then from the battery pack, I subsequently charge from that. The reason why I do it that way is because it gives me two USBs to charge from, and it means the battery pack is always gonna be charged. The K-Light setup comes with this little nifty switch, and that allows you to turn off the second USB, so there's USB 2 on it, which means you're taking less resistance because you're not using the Dynamo as much effectively. So the frame bag is made of the same sort of material as the top tube bag. This was actually full, during the race was full of Sterka Nutrition, uh, sunscreen, a Kamut Spork, 
which is incredibly useful. Um, lip balm and like some painkillers, uh, Pro Plus, you know, quick grab things. The other side of this, I basically have in it a bunch of tools that are quick grab tools. So my grand has a pen knife, a dyna plug, which will allow me to, you know, punch or anything quick with the, if the tubeless goes wrong, a multi-tool, some spare dyna plugs, and a pedal wrench, which would allow me to take my pedals off, a tiny, tiny, tiny Leatherman, and a bike lock, just a quick cafe lock, just to basically, if I need to run in somewhere and it's like a bit busy, it's just a bit of a peace of mind to not have to worry quite as much. In terms of water, I was carrying two large Sturka water bottles and I had a bladder on my back and one small additional water bottle which is mounted to the rear of this bike but it fell out so I put it in the bladder as well. The total amount of water I could carry was around about four litres give or take. The bladder on my back was two litres, these are 750 bottles and the other ones are 500 so someone who's better at maths than me can work that out. Then moving down the bike the bag which is sitting underneath the frame which is another bag from Tailfin and is mounted using the same straps as the top tube bags using their V-mount system. This is basically full of additional tools and spares, first aid stuff, kind of things that I don't really want to need in an emergency, inner tubes, that kind of thing. So the crank set is a GRX crank set. Uh, it's a 170 length. I ride 170 on everything apart from my time trial bike where I ride a 165 crank. Um, it's what works for me and I like it. I put, uh, they're called like crank boots on the end. It just protects the ends of the cranks from scuffing. Uh, they weigh nothing and it means that they look, they just last a bit longer and don't get so bashed up. The chain ring comes from Wolf Tooth as well. It's a 36 tooth chain ring. It was the smallest chain ring I could find and that was basically my rationale for using that. I wanted to have the easiest possible gear on a one by setup as opposed to having a two by setup which meant that there's another thing that could go wrong. In reality if I ran out of gear I was going fast enough. That was my mindset. It was just like oh you know I'm going over 30, 35 kph. It doesn't really matter. I don't need to pedal. I rode with power meter pedals. I rode with the Garmin uh, Rally mountain bike pedals. Dual sided power meter, you get tons and tons of data to do with your pedal stroke. The bit that I quite like is where your feet are sitting on the, on the pedal and so you can kind of see if you're pushing out like that, pushing in like that, see how your feet are moving around. Uh, you get really accurate data showing uh, your power on your left and right side. And I've been really impressed with them. I've been using them on my mountain bike for quite a long time and decided to use them on this for this race uh, as opposed to the power meter that came on the bike. The front end of the bike is built up with Cervelo's own flared handlebars and integrated stem. So the difference between the Espero and the Espero 5 primarily is the carbon layup. The Espero 5 is a lighter frame. Uh, and a, uh, the, but the actual ride quality is identical. The Espero 5 was also fully integrated, so all the cabling is hidden into the stem and into the frame and all integrated under the handlebars. These are my favorite handlebars that I've ever used. The shape of them is lovely to ride on. The top is slightly curved and feels really nice on your hands to rest your hands on the tops. And the bit that's great is that there's no holes to put the cables through, it's actually just a channel into the uh, handlebars, so it's actually really easy to maintain. Shifters come from Shimano with the GRX Di2 shifters. As I'm sure many people know, these are 100% my favorite shifters that exist. They're really ergonomic, and I have quite bad nerve damage in my left hand, so I can't grip properly on a lot of things. The shape of them allows me to lock my hand in because they curve round, and you have plenty of room to be able to grip two or even three fingers underneath the hood and still be able to brake and not get any like major contact. It's just really well designed. The pivot point is slightly different to the road shifters which allows you to do that. I've set this up so both the left and right shifter control the rear mech going up and down the cassette and the inside buttons on these shifters which are just tucked up at the top of the hoods also control the rear mech with the right hand shifter going down the block 
to a harder gear and the left hand shifter going up the block to an easier gear. Leading on to the shifting, I also had shifters on the end of these very funky looking TT bars, which I used so much more than I thought I would. The clip-on TT bars come from my mates at AeroCoach. They very kindly sent me a set of X prototype demo ones that they've sort of been using and testing. These are the longer arm length options that they have available. They provide all the different stackers and spacers to mount them onto your bike. I have 50 mil worth of spacers to rise them up as high as I can. You could obviously go lower and higher depending on your setup, but the best thing to do is to see what a bike fitter would think would work best for you. Their armrests are very well known and seen in World Tour. They're really good because they're quite high, so they hold you in really nicely and the padding is, comes all the way around the sides, so they're super comfortable. A lot of people think these are absolute overkill for this kind of race and I would agree you don't need something as fancy as this. I'm very lucky to be friends with the guys at AeroCoach and they offered me them to try out for this race. Badlands this year had quite a large amount of road and gravel that was also not too bad to ride with your bit, on your clip-on bars like so. So having the shifters on the end was actually perfect. It meant I could change gear, stay aero, stay comfortable and be able to have a different hand position to kind of give my hands a bit of a break. Aero wasn't the biggest goal but comfort was way more important for this race so we widened out the arm pads a little bit more using some adapters that they provide which are built into the whole thing. This year I ran with a Garmin 1040 Solar. It's their newest top-end computer which has the uh, solar charging capabilities and it meant I didn't really have to charge my computer for the whole thing because it was so bright and sunny. The computer itself uh, has the latest sort of software updates in Garmin's ecosystem and to be honest the battery life on it is so good anyway and the solar just makes it last for even longer which is awesome. AeroCoach make a special mount which bolts into the side of the TT bars. The TT bars themselves are titanium, they do a carbon version as well and the mount just bolts on and has a GoPro mount on the underside as well. Dynamo light. I bought these lights from K-Light. K-Light are a Australian I think company that produce really really good dynamo lights. I've been really really impressed with the setup. So I have several different options of dynamo lights at home but I seem to always go back to the K-Light system and then take in an exposure strata I think it is which is their big bad boy light to help brighten the road even more. For me, the Dynamo light is primarily for visibility and secondly, to be a base light, whatever, you know, how dark it is. I've always got that light running. I run it in the daytime, I run it at night. Uh, the front and the rear light. The rear light just blinks and the front light, as you start spinning, uh, the two outside beams come on and as you get more momentum, the central beam comes on as well. The additional exposure strata light was when it was rough and ready and I really wanted to see directly what was in front of my front wheel. The positioning of the dynamo light was slightly further forward so I could see more in front of me and then I ran with a head torch as well so I had light following where I was looking at my eyesight. A lot of people will notice that I have written some graffiti on my bike. There's two things that I've written on my bike in other words, look good, feel good. I always say it to myself when things get a bit shit and gritty. They're the words I say in my head. And I really do think that having it in front of me and not, you know, in my peripheral vision, it helped my motivation and helped me to push further. The other thing which is written on the stem are the words safe, finish and fun. And the, in that specific order. And now the reason why they're in that order is because safety for me is the most important thing. I want to come home and I want to be able to see my partner and my friends and family. Finish is second because the goal is always to finish. It doesn't really matter what the instance or the situation is. You always want to finish these races. And lastly, fun, because why would you do it if you're not going to have at least some fun? There always are going to be bits where they're a bit tough and brutal, but you have to have fun in these moments as well. Um... Last thing to add is that a lot of people ask what size bike I ride, all that kind of stuff. And I ride a 54 in the Cervelo Espero 5. This is the jazziest color in the world that they do. It's like a purple to green to gold flip. I ride a 120 stem and on this bike I'm riding 40 centimeter handlebars, which are slightly flared. The 
crank arm is 170 and my saddle height is like 780 I think something like that so I have quite a lot of seat post a long stem but a smaller frame uh, I am 183 centimeters so just under six foot and for me I also have long legs and long arms and this is what works with me according to the bike fitters that I've worked with and it's a freaking cool bike like subscribe comment all that stuff it's filthy I've got to go clean it now with some sparpy stuff